In this series of videos, I want to explore a particular technology or product, something that is gaining in popularity elsewhere in the world or is already very popular. And I'm going to give you three reasons why this could become the next big trend in the US, followed by three reasons why this could all just be a mirage, nothing to get excited about. And I want to encourage you to participate by typing T for trend or M for mirage in the comments. And if you feel like sharing your thoughts about it, add that too. After about a month, I'll go through all the comments and tally up the results. You probably know what I'm talking about. This type of charger is becoming popular throughout Europe. It provides level two AC charging for battery electric vehicles or plug-in hybrids. It's well suited for curbside charging in large cities, but it really can be used anywhere. Unlike a regular level two charger, it does not have a cable permanently attached. The owner of the EV provides that. They carry it in their car, and then when needed, they whip it out, plug one end into the charge post, and the other end into your vehicle. Some people refer to this as BYOC, bring your own cable. You start a session using the mobile app. Many have an RFID card reader also. A credit card reader is not impossible, but it adds complexity and they tend to suck anyway. When the session begins, the charge post locks down on its plug and the vehicle does the same, so it cannot be pulled out. The first reason why this could or should become a trend in the US is the best one. They look great in that you hardly notice they're there. They can be modern, retro, or whatever you like. In its most basic form, it looks like a bollard. That's a term for a pole cemented into the ground to prevent people from running into things. Bollards alongside the street would just look like they're there to protect pedestrians. An even more elegant solution is to integrate the charge post into a street lamp. Those are already on the sidewalk and they already have electricity running in them. Now, the electricity is not sufficient to run a level two charger as well as lighting, so some modification to the service is required. A more practical advantage of this design is that it avoids cables becoming a tripping hazard for people walking by. When in use, the owner needs to neatly tuck the extra cable in a way that keeps it tidy. When not in use, the cable goes into the owner's EV. A bonus reason is that this could discourage theft of cables. It's not impossible to steal them, but it limits the opportunity. Keeping it simple also reduces the cost to install infrastructure. There are other solutions to curbside EV charging, but they get really complicated. Cable management systems lift cables off the ground. Those add the cost for that mechanism and a taller structure. There are EV chargers that raise and lower the cable automatically using a motor. It's a neat idea, but again, complexity and cost. Arms that raise and lower the cable. That's a clever idea, but again, not simple. With a charge post, let's say a cable costs I don't know, $100 times a thousand charger that the city wants to deploy, that's less money the taxpayer needs to shell out. But you still need a cable. Who pays for that? The owner of the EV, of course. You can just sell them online. Amazon can deliver them. Let gas stations sell them. Whatever you want. Just order the type of plug you need for the car you drive. What could possibly go wrong? Well, people don't like change. This is different. An EV charger without a cable, that's like going to a grocery store and they expect you to bring a bag. Some people won't like it. This sounds like a trivial reason not to adopt a new product, but do not underestimate our resistance to try something new. Another reason why this might not take off in the US is the perception that it's only for big cities and curbside parking. There's no reason why you couldn't also use this in parking garages, at work, apartment and housing complexes, but curbside is the best application. And in the US, we just don't have as many densely populated areas as do other parts of the world. BYOC charging adds variability to an already complex charging infrastructure. If you live near one of these, great, go buy a cable. If you're visiting from somewhere, you may not already have one. What do you mean I gotta bring my own cable? That's not how we do it in the suburbs. It's just another source of complexity and another potential source of EV ownership frustration. So there you have it. Three reasons why this is going to become a trend in the US, followed by three reasons why it's probably just a mirage. Type your thoughts in the comments below and thanks for watching.